Hello, it's Ina and this is Know Thyself. Welcome or welcome back. I cover everything related to tarot and divination as it pertains to both esoteric study and self-discovery. So if that piques your interest, consider hitting that subscription button down below so you never miss a video. Okay, so I'm trying something different today. I'm doing a voiceover because the audio for the original audio was really bad. So I didn't want to lose the footage. Um, I don't know if this is going to stick, if I'm going to keep doing this. But anyway, I've created a playlist for this series and I'll link it down below. And yeah, let's get into it. So we're on to the second Deacon of Sagittarius now with the Nine of Wands, also known as Strength in the Thoth. And I thought I'd make this a little bit more personal because I'd say this year for me, 2022, has been a very nine of onesy kind of year for me. This is how I feel right now. I'm, I've been through some shit <laughs> and I've, I've seen it all. <laughs> and I'm still somehow standing. I'm still alive. I've been put through the ringer. And yeah, so I'll go into the esoteric stuff, of course, but also I'll link another video where I talk about my mental health that I made um, a while back so that you have a bit of context for what I'm gonna talk about today. Um, I'll, I'll link that down below. So, because I think this card really sums up my experiences this year, I I think I'll end this year on, on this note. So no more Deacon Walk videos until next year. I'll just leave it at that. I think it's a good way to wrap things up. So yeah, I'm moving my hands a lot, I don't remember why. So I very much identify with the stance this person has in Pixie's depiction of the Nine of Wands. It's kind of like, I've been through some shit, I've seen some shit, and I'm still gonna take on the world. So personal resilience, that's what this video is about. So the second deacon of Sagittarius is ruled by the moon, so the corresponding mages would be the High Priestess and Temperance, which stand in for the Moon and Sagittarius, respectively. In the Nine of Wands, we see this quiet fortitude that has been forged through lived experience. And the reason I say forge is quite intentional, because I kind of see Temperance as like the blacksmith right the alchemist of the tarot and of course it is called temperance is called art in the thoth and there's another really interesting detail that i wanted to point out before i get into the rest um so we have the tree of life here and as you can see the paths of the high priestess and temperance actually merge and form a straight line right from keta through tiferet down to malkut so I'm showing the path of the High Priestess and the path of Temperance. They actually align and meet in Yesod, which is where the Nine of Wands naturally resides. So now I'm showing you the paths. I don't know if you can see them, but path 13 is the path of the High Priestess, Gimel, and then Samech, if that's how you pronounce it, I'm so sorry, is the path of Temperance. Oh, and Samech is path uh, 25, so that's the path of temperance, and they both meet here in Yesod. So all the nines reside in Yesod, and as you can see, this is probably the most direct, straightest line from Keta down to Malkut, so it's the most direct way of getting between the two. I thought that was interesting. So we actually see a reference in the Thoth to both Tiferet and Yesod, with the sun glyph opposing the moon glyph. So Tiferet is the sun and Yesod is the moon. And of course, there's a straight line between them because the path is, the path between them is 
straight, so it, that's what it's referencing, this wand. So we see a direct correlation between Tifera and Yasod, and by extension Keta, because Tiferet connects to Keta, so it's like Yesod is receiving the energy of Source all the way from Keta, which is the crown. So it's receiving the original will. So out of tradition, let's see what Wei and Crowley have to say about the Nine of Wands. So Wei says, The figure leans upon his staff and has an expectant look as if awaiting an enemy. Behind are eight other staves, erect, in orderly disposition, like a palisade. Divinatory meanings. The card signifies strength in opposition. If attacked, the person will meet an onslaught boldly, and his build shoes that he may prove a formidable antagonist. With this main significance, there are all its possible adjuncts. Delay, suspension, adjournment, reversed. Obstacles, adversity, calamity. So it's interesting that, or that's a very Victorian way of saying, you know, he's built a fortress around himself with the wands. But it's interesting that he mentions strength in opposition because of the Thoth. Because the key word for the Nine of Wands in the Thoth is strength. That's the hermetic title. And we literally see strength in opposition. So strength, keyword for the Nine of Wands. In opposition, we see Tiferet and Yesod in opposition, the sun and the moon. So I thought that was an interesting little clue <laughs> that uh, weight left there. Maybe intentionally or not intentionally, I don't know. So what does Crowley have to say? This card is referred to Yasod, the foundation. This brings the energy back into balance. The nine represents always the fullest development of the force in its relation with the forces above it. The nine may be considered as the best that can be obtained from the type involved, regarded from a practical and material standpoint. This card is also governed by the moon in Sagittarius, so here is a double influence of the moon on the tree of life. Hence the aphorism, change is stability. So what I believe Crowley is referring to when he talks about the nine representing the fullest development of the force in its relation with the forces above it, I think he's talking about the nine being the culmination of the numbers that precede it. So the nine is the perfection, is the final number, and the ten is just the overspill. The wands have now become arrows. There are eight of them in the background, and in front of them, one master arrow. This has the moon for its point, and the sun for the driving force above it. The path of Sagittarius on the tree of life joins the sun and the moon. So. What, we, what I was talking about before. The flames in the card are tenfold, implying that the energy is directed downward. So what I was probably just demonstrating now in the video is that the actual fletching of the arrow uh, consists of eight little moons, and then the point is the ninth moon, so nine moons to complete the sequence for the nine of wands. So here I believe, because I'm dumb, I actually start counting the moons one by one just to make sure that I'm not talking shit and uh, there actually are nine moons in total. So that's what this is. I love Lady Frida Harris's art for the Thoth. Um, I think the Thoth wouldn't be what it is without her. She was the real MVP. Okay, so all of that good. Um, I'm actually gonna change the structure of this a little bit and I'm gonna read from the Elemental Tarot guidebook. So the Elemental Tarot does deviate quite a bit from other established systems, but I kind of just wanted to put a little spin on it and get a different perspective. So the astrological correspondences for this card, which is the Nine of Fire in the Elemental Tarot, are quite different. It's Sun and Mars. So the Sun is kind of still there but Mars gives it a completely different energy. And the reason I'm even bringing up the elemental tarot in the first place is because I think the entry for the Nine of Fire or the Nine of Wands in this case is really interesting and kind of brings to mind a different kind of resilience. So it says, a beautiful, pale, golden face, serene and majestic, 
has eyes fixed, unseeing, and is unaware of the figure before him. The middle section of his crown is the uraeus, a serpent surrounding a solar disk, meaning sovereignty, power, and light. Two ram's heads face outwards, signifying virility and masculine creative energy. Left and right profiles represent the completeness and detachment of the psyche. Small red figure shields his eyes from the glowing image above. So there's actually another little detail I wanted to discuss about the Nine of Wands, and it's that the Nine of Wands is actually one of a few cards in the Minor Arcana that has a very special property. The Nine of Wands is the last of the deacons where the respective planet's influence is amplified by its corresponding Sephiroth. In other words, the planet the deacon is ruled by also corresponds with where the associated tarot card falls numerically on the Tree of Life. So we have Moon and Sagittarius falling on the ninth Sephiroth, which is also ruled by the Moon. There are only six other deacons slash tarot cards where this happens. So these are actually the six deacons leading up to the Nine of Wands. So that would be the Three of Swords, the Four of Swords, the Five of Cups, the Six of Cups, the Seven of Cups, and finally the Eight of Cups. So we have the Three of Swords here with Saturn in Libra, and of course all the threes fall on the third Sephiroth, which is Bina, and Bina is ruled by Saturn as well. So Saturn in Libra falling in Saturn. And then we move on to the Four of Swords, which is Jupiter in Libra, and all the fours fall on the fourth Sephiroth, which is Hokma. No, not Hokma, Chesed, and Chesed is ruled by Jupiter, so Jupiter and Libra coinciding with Jupiter. And then we have the Five of Cups, which is Mars and Scorpio, and the Fives fall on the fifth Sephiroth, which is Gabora, and Gabora is ruled by Mars, so we have Mars in Scorpio falling on the Mars Sephiroth. Okay, and next we have the Six of Cups with the Sun in Scorpio, and all the Sixes fall on the Sixth Sphere, um, Tiferet, and we of course know now that Tiferet is associated with the Sun, so we have Sun in Scorpio falling on the Sun. Okay, I'm just waiting for the video to catch up. So next up we have the Seven of Cups, which we covered in the last, um, no, not the last, the first Deacon Walk video. And the Seven of Cups, of course, is Venus in Scorpio. Um, all the Sevens land on Netzach, and Netzach is ruled by Venus, so we have Venus in Scorpio falling on the Venus Sephiroth. And finally, five hours later, we are moving on to the Eight of Wands, which is the last deacon where this happens. Second to last, anyway. Um, so the Eights fall on Hod, which is ruled by Mercury, and the Eight of Wands is Mercury in Sagittarius. And here I remember asking myself if I'm overcomplicating things. Surely not. Um, but anyway, we're we're done with the deacons and we're moving on to the numerology. So in terms of the numerology, uh, I'm actually going to go back to the Elemental Tarot guidebook and read what it has to say on the nine specifically because I think it's really interesting and it sums up my thoughts on the nine. So it says, nine is traditionally the perfect number. Indian astrologers multiply the positions of the planets in their birth charts by nine to find the essence of a person's reality. Three times three is a triangle of triangles and is perfection in the fire element. This is a good card. So here I believe it's referring to the fact that the elemental glyph for fire is a triangle. So there's a kind of symmetry there. 
And I think here I start drawing a triangle in case you don't know what a triangle looks like. Now you know, that's a triangle. So I wanted to point this out because I noticed it quite a while back when I was reading Marseille. Uh, I don't think it was a mistake that all the nines have, in the Rider Waite Smith, I mean, have just one figure on them. So the figure is surrounded by the element of their respective suit. So be it cups, pentacles or swords or wands, there's just one person, right? And in the Marseille, the way you read the pips is by incorporating their respective major arcana. So the sevens are associated with the chariot and in this case, the nines are associated with the hermit. So considering the hermit is on a solo journey, it would make sense then that the nines would also be, would also depict people that are on their own. So numero numerologically, try saying that 10 times fast, the nine represents the climactic peak of the numerical order. So it's the true finish line, in my opinion, where we wrap up our journey. The nine is the culmination of individual achievements, as you can see in all the nines. Before these achievements are shared with the collective in the ten, which is Malkut, otherwise known as the kingdom, or the material plane, or Asaya, where these achievements disintegrate and the ten becomes the one or the all. In the nines, we focus on individual merits or shortcomings, what one has learned and picked up on the journey from the one to the eight. That's why in the nine of wands, we see the resilience of one person or the individual, not the collective. And speaking of the resilience of one person, um, what a segue, this year has really tested me. And I could say that about every year before this one, but, I, I've, I've been sick, okay? And this year has really tested me. This year has pushed me to my limits. Um, it's taken me from one extreme to the other, uh, kind of like temperance, but only so I could come out stronger and finally end up on the middle path, like temperance. <laughs> so, Think about how a blacksmith would forge and temper metals to make swords so that they're strong and resilient. Um, that's kind of like the process I've been through. <laughs> um, I've had two suicide attempts this year and been hospitalized on two separate occasions because of them. I've experienced life in a psychiatric ward, been re-diagnosed, re put on the right medication, and found the right therapy. And I'm finally on the right path. After suffering for 13 long years, I've tried it all. I've tried all kinds of therapy, all kinds of medication, gone to school and dropped out again and again. All of that to finally, finally end up here where I'm supposed to be. Was it worth it? I don't know. I feel as world-weary as the guy on the Nine of Wands does. I don't know what any of it means in the grand scheme of things. I just know that I've come out stronger. I think things are finally looking up for me. So how do you relate to the Nine of Wands personally? Um, what's your relationship to the Nine of Wands? And of course, I do plan on making an actual series on mental health and tarot, or I don't know, just find a way to talk about it more because I, haven't gone into a lot of detail here, but I do plan on 
I do intend to talk about it. So, yeah. Um, let me know if you like this video, if you found it illustrative, educational, entertaining somehow. Um, consider giving it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.